Now, I'd seen thousands of dead insurgents laying around the city. It was nothing to see dead bad guys. But the second I saw one of your own dead Marines laying there, they flipped the switch on me and I wanted to go to kill every one of those insurgents. Probably the most amazing thing I've ever seen before. I mean, I've seen things like that on National Geographic. Oh, good shot. That was worth <laughs> everything. We're not politically correct, we just have common sense. Unscripted, unfiltered, unfaltering. Joy Supports Hunt for Heroes offers tributes and true stories of remarkable courage. If these terrorists could come in your bedroom, they'd kill you, your wife, and your kids. And that's what these men are fighting to protect us from, these, these murdering idiots. And uh, they're taking them out so that we don't have to deal with them over here. Show of support started it all, just after the shock and awe bound a nation together. Now, years of footage portraying wounded veterans, deer stands, and standing ovations. Hunt for Heroes, that started as one man's way to say thanks, is now a series that many say is way overdue. <laughs> I ain't never felt like that before, and I want to feel that again. It's just a raw emotion. They left us being loved and being honored for the heroes that they are. We still have 40,000 injured troops. If you threaten our people and our way of life, we will find you wherever you may be hiding, in the place you feel most safe, and we'll kill you in your own bedroom. Thank you for being a country worth fighting for. God bless you, and God bless the United States of America. It's going to take a while to get around to all of them, but there's no quitting. It'll never stop as long as I'm breathing. Show sure Support Hunt for Heroes is made possible through a partnership with Pioneer Natural Resources, Boss Blinds, Caltech, Tico Field Service, Double J Ranches, CBT Charities, and Christmas for our troops. I live in uh, Northern Virginia. Uh, you know, where it's hustle bustle every day, sitting in traffic. So one to get away from that and uh, just be outside and kind of be at peace. The excitement of opening weekend of deer season can reach out for thousands of miles, from crowded airport terminals to connecting flights. Jeremiah Workman worked his way to Menard, Texas, just to be here when the sun rises on opening morning. I'd been looking forward to this trip for a long time for a couple reasons. Terry, to know that I'm going to get to spend a few days with him, nothing to worry about. And they have a real chef here, too. They really do. We're just out here having a good time, so I was pretty uh, stoked about going out and getting it started. I'll make a recommendation that you can eat whatever you want. They make the best ribeye steak in the world. Terry Johnson told Jeremiah he could bring a buddy. That wasn't hard for him to come up with a name, Matt Hammond and Jeremiah share one of those friendships forged in a battle, shoulder to shoulder in the effort to rid the world of cowards who hide behind women and children, afraid to go face to face with the American military. It's a job well done by two Marines. Tonight though, it's medium rare steaks at Side Oats, a traditional meeting place in this corner of the Texas Hill Country. In this part of Texas, this night is more than a date on a calendar. It's the stuff of dreams, the stuff of memories. And tonight, for Jeremiah Workman, it will be sleep interrupted. I never really hunted as a kid. As a, as a kid, it was squirrels, rabbits, groundhogs, things like that. For me, when the first light comes out and you're starting to see the trees and things, it's uh, my world goes from 100 miles an hour to 25 miles an hour, it seems like, overnight. And it's just, it's awesome to sit there and just soak everything in and be a part of it. There he is. One's coming out. While Jeremiah and his buddy Matt have split up and teamed up with two different guides, it's a toss-up for who's been looking forward to this hunt more. Terry Johnson or Jeremiah. A 10-point buck becomes the first deer spotted for the hunting season. 
it seems the buck is pulling a rolling wave of fog behind him. You know, just to watch it come out, and uh, you know, it's such an amazing, it was an amazing animal, you know, beautiful deer. One thing that really goes through my mind is being a Marine and taking a shot and missing. <laughs> I would have killed the deer in a second if Terry would have given me the green light, that's for sure. It's the kind of fog that can kill a deer hunt, but it's not the only hurdle that can fall from the sky. The sky turns black, it starts torrential downpour. A major storm and a major blow to a deer hunt. As show of support hunt for heroes continues. Stay with us. This portion of show of support hunt for heroes is made possible through a partnership with Pioneer Natural Resources. He's a shooter, but I think we can do better. Hunting guide and ranch owner Terry Johnson is holding Jeremiah off in that peculiar Texas tradition called restraint. The buck gets within bow range. You know, he's moving slightly to the left, and I'm thinking, I, I mean, I definitely would have killed this deer if I would have gotten the green light from Terry. It was like somebody flipped the switch, and it, it was there, and it lifted. I think it's over with for this point. It was early, it was the first morning of the hunt, so we, we weren't really in a huge rush. The lodge here at the Lonesome Dove Ranch is a far cry from the ramshackle plywood barracks of Iraq until trouble rolls in. The view from the porch out there, it's amazing. You can watch the system roll in. Within 10 minutes, you know, the sky turns black. It starts just torrential downpour. From the back of Terry Johnson's lodge, Jeremiah wonders if his hunt has been washed away by a pounding storm. The only thing is, a rain like this and the deafening blows of thunder can reach deep down and stir up memories. Memories of a place called Fallujah. We were going through uh, house to house, picking up weapons, ammo that was left behind during the major fighting from the battle. You know, a couple weeks into it, we walked into a, a hornet's nest and there was a house full of insurgents. Half my squad got stuck on the second story of this house. For three hours, it was, it was just a intense, close quarters, in your face gunfight, trying to get those Marines out of there. Something snapped inside this Marine soul on that terrible day. Ambushed and outnumbered, Jeremiah made several charges to rescue Marines trapped in the relentless firefight raging in a Fallujah two-story house. You know, I'd seen thousands of dead insurgents laying around that city. It was nothing to see dead bad guys, but the second I saw one of your own dead Marines laying there, it was pretty tough. It flipped the switch on me and I wanted to go back in the house and kill every one of those uh, insurgents that was left in that house. That three hours definitely changed my life forever. He's been called the hero who didn't save himself. Jeremiah Workman's bravery would be forever recorded in the hugely popular book, Shadow of the Sword. It's my pleasure to introduce to you this evening, Jeremiah Workman. Shadow of the Sword is not a war story. I mean, it's a couple of stories wrapped into one, but mainly my story coming back and dealing with post-traumatic stress disorder and things like that. I was at rock bottom. One night, two, three in the morning, I walked up, went to the garage, grabbed my father-in-law's rifle, and was gonna end it right there. Jeremiah fought another battle here at home, the battle against his memories, the traumatic impact of unthinkable tragedy. Shadow of the Sword, is his story and the story of the three Marines he lost. I think when I go out and speak somewhere, what I want people to take away is just that, uh, you know, it's not about me, you know, the individual, but I'm speaking on behalf of everybody that's went over there and fought. Having a second chance to serve others 
and then my kids. That is the reason I'm still here today, folks. Finally, the clouds carry their fury eastward, along with the memories better left in the pages of a book. They barely got enough time to get to the blind before dark. The storm broke, uh, the sun started to come out, we were kind of running, we were behind the eight ball a little bit, kind of had to rush, get out to the blind. The storm broke, uh, the sun started to come out, we were kind of running, we were behind the eight ball a little bit, kind of had to rush, get out to the blind. It seems deer season's been christened by a major thunderstorm in the Texas Hill Country. Terry Johnson and Jeremiah Workman have very little daylight remaining. Terry is in awe of Jeremiah's story. So much has happened to this one decorated Marine compared to so many who wear the eagle, globe, and anchor. Jeremiah does, however, carry the burden of three friends he lost that terrible day in Iraq. I say I lost them because <clears throat> as a, I was their squad leader and you're responsible for everything they do from the training that leads up to the deployment to the deployment itself, their health, their safety, and everything in between. So that's, you know, you, you take, take on responsibility for that. These days, it takes a lot to take his mind off those three hours in Fallujah. Look at that double rainbow. It's like right out of a painting. I mean, it's, it's beautiful out here. We're almost to the blind, and I just happened to look up. Standing right there is a big buck, kind of in the brush. Instantly, you, you want to grab the gun, you, your heart starts beating. Standing right there watching us. Terry knew that with the sky clearing and darkness approaching, the bucks would be moving. He didn't expect to get pinned down with no shooting sticks or good plan. Through the light curtain of rain, all they can tell is it's a great buck. Let's get on in, maybe they'll, maybe he'll come up in later. And I couldn't get the image of the buck out of my mind. Terry looks at me and he tells me we're gonna wait for that buck that we seen when we were walking up to the blind to come out into the opening. You know, we just kind of sat there and waited to see if we could get this buck to come around. A lot of time went by, and uh, after the rain, I guess I, I expected the, the deer to be moving all over the place, but a lot of time had went by and we hadn't seen a whole lot. So after a while, you know, we're sitting there and uh, I see movement there on the right, and it's that buck that we had seen that morning with the, with the real wide rack, and you know, there it come out of, the, out of the tree line, and kind of the same thing from that morning. You know, the heart starts racing, the adrenaline starts running, and it's like, here we go again. I couldn't believe it, but this is the second time that I've been passing this buck up. He keeps looking over there like there's something else. All of a sudden, I saw more movement on the right side, and uh, out from the tree line came an eight-point buck. And I would have shot the, the eight-point buck as well uh, in a heartbeat, but uh, I, I guess I'm sitting there thinking that on this ranch, I got to wait for the green light from Terry, and you know, I'm just waiting on guidance. Terry's holding out for the buck they spotted while walking to the blind. Somewhere past the trees and the windmill, the wave of thunderstorms moves across Texas, ushering in darkness and an end to a long day on the Lonesome Dove Ranch. Leaving the blind that night, you know, I was starting to, uh, you know, you're, you're wondering, you're second guessing a little bit, you know, you're, you're one day closer to the end of the hunt. Uh, but, you know, I just, uh, you know, I knew we had another day to come out here, and uh, but it, it sure was, uh, you know, I kept replaying that, that buck in my mind, that's for sure. I'm watching these two bucks on the left, and all of a sudden they lock up, they start fighting. Probably the most amazing thing I've ever seen before. Ready to squeeze the trigger, and a fight breaks out as the show of support hunt for heroes continues. Stay with us.
closed captioning for Show of Support Hunt for Heroes is made possible through a partnership with Boss Blinds. Tonight, if Terry looks at me and tells me you have the green light, I'm taking the deer down. That's it. Two close calls, and we're coming down to the wire, so I will be ready tonight. It's the last day, last afternoon, last chance for Jeremiah Workman. His guide, Terry Johnson, has been holding out, passing up lesser bucks, young bucks, and bucks that could have been a maybe deer. But now, in the last two hours of Jeremiah's hunt, the pressure's on. I had a good feeling, but I knew we were we were getting to the end of this, and just wanted wanted to get out there and uh, make something happen. The first buck came out. I got really excited. We didn't have to sit there nearly as long as I had first thought we were going to. But it came out, it was a big deer, it was a good looking deer. The second deer that came out was a big wide deer, uh, big deer, good looking deer. Terry gave me the green light to go ahead and shoot it. And I, that's the one I put the gun up, you know, to shoot. I think there were five bucks standing out there at one yeah, time. Oh, they're fixing a five. They are five. Probably the most amazing thing I've ever seen before. I mean, I've seen things like that on National Geographic, uh, but to sit there and watch it and watch it unfold like that, and you know, they weren't playing around. They were really fighting. It's amazing to see this. That's incredible. I've never seen this before. This is awesome. And they're playing for real, too. I mean, it was amazing. I, I've never seen anything like that. To sit out there and witness this, I mean, it was pretty awesome for me. They both went into the brush on the right, to the right of us, and I thought it was all over. I thought I'd missed my chance. Next thing I know, they ran, They both ran out into the clearing, and uh, Terry looks at me and tells me this is gonna happen. We kind of start talking back and forth again. He gives me the green light. Okay, the one running at us is the what I think is a pretty decent buck, but you look at him. You decide that, yeah. yeah. Jeremiah has a green light on the buck on the right exhausted from the fight. Yeah, he's kind of limping. He's sore from fighting. I was super pumped up, really excited. Uh, but being a Marine, what's going through my mind is I want to I want to shoot the deer. I don't want to miss. You know, you'll never hear the end of it, things like that. But I was super excited. Good shot. That was worth everything. <laughs> when I looked up above the scope and I saw the deer immediately fall, it didn't take a step. I was just, I was excited, relieved. <laughs> Congratulations. I mean, it, it's the biggest buck I've ever shot. To watch that thing drop in its place, it's just an awesome feeling. Awesome. That was, uh, whew, I, <laughs> I was nervous, nervous, nervous. A lot of action. Walking up, you know, I was a little nervous, uh, but the closer we got to it, the deer was amazing. I mean, it was everything that I thought it would be, hoped it would be. I mean, it was a good looking deer. See, now there's what I'm talking about. <laughs> you pick him up first, that's your deer. Here, let me hold that. You get to put your hands on him first. Oh my goodness. Look at all that. First time I touched his antlers, felt awesome. I couldn't believe I had just shot this, uh, massive buck. What do you think? You like him? It's awesome. For everything to unfold the way it did, I mean, it couldn't have worked out any better. I think what really made it special was being there with Terry, getting to share that moment with him. You know, he, he does so much for us. 
uh, for the Wounded Warriors that are coming back. Uh, so, it, I mean, it, it's very awesome to share that moment with them. It felt really good. He's been called the hero who didn't save himself. Jeremiah Workman had put a lot of memories behind him, but like so many who have come home, it's a sunset and a big white tail buck that come in handy when you're living in the shadow of the sword. We went over there, we did our jobs, uh, we did what we signed up to do, but it's just awesome that there are patriotic Americans that are willing to go out of their way to try to show us a good time and um, it's been a great weekend and there's no way that I can say thank you enough.